Are you feeling slightly ready to do a podcast? I was born slightly ready. Yay! Turn that down, mate. Turn, it, turn what down? The loud thing. What, what's 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 going on? It's like it's like a zombie apocalypse or something. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Frame by Frame. I'm yep. Stephen. This is uh... Andy. Yo, how you doing, guys? Good. Nice to hear from you. <laughs> you talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Like, who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? No, funny how. I mean, funny. Like, I'm clown. I'm Peter Vinkman. We all go a little mad sometimes. Man, the best is that time and the time that never been. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! You haven't got your guitar as a weapon to get you through the opening credits. No, no, because what we're discussing today would be difficult to play the theme tune to. Yeah. There's no theme tune to Dawn and the Dead. Well, there is, but there's... We're talking about remakes today, aren't remakes we? Remakes in general, yes. Yeah. So we're, we're kind of going to focus on a little bit on, on Dawn of the Dead or use Dawn of the Dead as kind of like our mainframe for this episode. But we yeah. are going to talk about remakes. Um, a lot of remakes come from many different sources, as we well know. It's some, you, sometimes it's an American film remade from an American film. Yeah. A lot of the time there are Japanese films that are remade into American films. Yes. Correct. And also British or European, so yeah, we're, what, kind, of go, we're kind of going for yeah, it. Yeah, what it seems to be is if a, a film makes a little bit of money, then Hollywood will get it, up the budget by 30 million, 100 million, whatever, and, you know, try and make more money out of it. Even, even if it's a cult, even if it's a cult classic, that yeah. might not necessarily be, you know... Um, to clarify a remake, it has to. Uh, we're saying that it has to be kind of the same story or the same origin story. It's like S- Superman has had about four different origin stories as a Spider-Man. But you wouldn't ca- you call those reimaginings? Yeah, like I wouldn't remakes. call them a remake because they're not remaking a film, I suppose, as right. opposed to trying to reboot a franchise. That's true. That's true. Yeah. That's it. It's a reboot. Yeah, we have to watch. Uh, we're watching Dawn of the Dead in the background. And, yeah, um, for inspiration. This is what made us talk about this. Is Stephen doesn't like the original Dawn of the Dead. He prefers a remake. Yeah, I do, and I think that it's the thing about uh, zombies. It's just the nature of zombies as as a as a thing. I don't like slow moving zombies. Right. Um, it's not so much that I don't like them. It's just that I don't believe that anybody can actually who actually do get caught by a, a zombie walking slowly towards them is stupid. And that they should actually have the ability to run and escape or actually uh, they've got plenty of time to figure it out it's like it follows is a way, in a way kind of closer to the point I sort of agree with what you're saying there but usually in a, a zombie film if there's just a few of them to get away they just like push them out the way and they make a yeah. point of them moving so slow what the point is is a zombie apocalypse so it's the, it's the sheer volume of zombies that you can't get away from there's just so many of them and, and that they're kit, just creeping yeah. towards you, and it's and you know you're in a corner of a room, you can't get away, and it yeah. finally gets you, just rip you. Up. In 1968, George Romero brought us Night of the Living Dead. It became the classic horror film of its time. Not that room! Not that room! Now, George Romero brings us the most intensely shocking motion picture experience for all times. It gets up and kills. The people it kills get up and kill. This situation must be controlled before it's too late. They are multiplying too rapidly. Dawn of the Dead. Meet me on the roof at 9 o'clock. Get out. I don't believe it. We're going to get out in the chopper. We've got to survive. Somebody's got to survive. They kill for one reason. They kill for food. They eat their victims. Imagine, if you will, that something has gone terribly wrong. Shoot it, man. Now, accept the fact that there's no escaping the horrible consequences. George Romero brings back the dead. 
Night of the living dead has ended. Dawn of the dead is here. The only time that it works is when the human living element becomes a problem as well. Of course, when they're fighting uh, to stay alive, they're, they're uh, you know, it's kill or be killed, or be eaten by a zombie. So when yeah. when that when that's working together, like in The Walking Dead, for example, they're they're quite slow moving zombies, um, but they're very very sneaky. There's a lot more sneakiness to them, but yeah. it's the human versus human element of survival that's more important in that series. Yeah, I well, like I think the the Romero films, the very early ones. I think, like Night Nights of the Living Dead, they're just stuck in that room, that house. Yeah, yeah, the whole time. And you know, do in with the family. The family's got the daughter too sick. You know, she's going to turn sooner or later. Yes, yeah. And um, it's more about how they can deal work with it and, and work it. together as opposed to the, the zombies. It's always more about the humans than the zombies. You know. That's it. Yeah, and. Um, for the most part, I, mean, I think the first scene in, in Night of the Living Dead, when she's at the cemetery or something, and uh, they're and, coming for you, Barbara. And yeah, and it's just the one guy who kind of <laughs> comes across and kills the boyfriend. But uh, he doesn't. He pushes the boyfriend, and the boyfriend the goes boyfriend. down and bangs his head on a gravestone. Oh, and so it's that's quite violent how that happens. Yeah, yeah. You know, but and then, then she's just terrified, and this thing's coming towards her. So she gets in the car and goes down a hill, the hill and she runs the, away. The makeup of it looks kind of. Frankenstein-ish, you know, Dr. Dr. Frankenstein's monster kind of look. Hi, Starbuck. I don't know what... what yeah. Cause is, the, is that the first zombie film? It was film? the first... Um, zombies, White Zombie was the first zombie film. Right. Uh, but yeah, I, I kind of I kind of get it, but it, it never... It, it's, it's funny how it didn't scare me at all, and I didn't feel like threatened by I it. Even that. though it's the most iconic George Romero film being Night of the Living Dead. And I think it's probably dated tremendously yeah well it was black and white but it was yeah. again it was quite progressive progressive um, for what it was yeah it had a black leading actor in it that's true which that's was true. rare for what was yeah, the late think, yeah it was progressive in a lot of those ways but then have you ever seen the remake of Night of the Living Dead um, I don't think I it's have it's pretty much shot for shot remake but it's, it's gorier and not black and white and it's the dude out of Candyman who plays the uh, the main character. Dude, yeah, I know that guy. Yeah. Not so, personally, not intimately, but... Yeah, no, it's okay, though. It's yeah, it's good. good. Film. Yeah. Yeah. Tony Todd. I think I actually prefer that to the original, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think Maybe. when it comes down to it, I mean, you, there's, a, there's a reason for a remake to come out. And usually it's because that the first one is so dated that it needs updating, and then it needs to have some kind of a relevance for today's audience to pick yeah. up on it. And that being said, a lot of the originals are being un unnecessarily remade recently. We'll but, get on uh, to that. Yeah, we'll I get know. on to that. But <clears throat> for, for the starters, I mean, horror films are very easily remade um, because well, they're usually yeah. low budget to begin with. Well, the remake of Dawn of the Dead, um, which was Zack Snyder's. Yeah, I think it might be his first film, or definitely one of his first films. I think it's my film I like the most of Zack Snyder. He tends to be a little bit, a little bit too pop cultural. Maybe, maybe that's what I want to say. Pop, pop, yeah, popular, trying to masses. Yeah, perhaps, but um, playing to the masses <clears throat> too much, maybe. Well, mm -hmm. I think I'm pretty sure this was the first. Film. It kicked off uh, a, a running zombie thing where all zombies then start running. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And that's a lot true. of people don't like it because zombies aren't supposed to run. But the reason I do like it. I suppose having this reanimated corpse just walking towards you, but to have this thing that's ravenous, yeah, and it's, it's running to eat you because it's fucking, and it's I think all, it's, it's primal urge to eat you, and, and it's, it's scary. Not dead. It's actually just uh, it's undead, my friend. It's undead, and that, and I think that what people kind of thought was from the dead that when the things rise, they're dead. So they basically they don't have much sense of direction. So they have to use their put their hands in front of them. And they have to do the Frankenstein's monster yeah. thing, and that was the original idea of what zombies were supposed to be, but that doesn't necessarily it's not necessarily set in stone. Zombies aren't supposed to be anything, but if you actually influence certain things such as a virus that, that a pandemic virus that wipes out people and kills them, but then basically reanimates psycho psycho humans that are yeah. undead then that, that, there's legitimacy behind that because they, it's just a different breed of zombie. 
and uh, I, 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 I can totally believe in that more than the actual slow moving zombie um, what I always like about the, the Day of the Dead and the, you know like this one yeah. Dawn of the Dead the remake is it, it just like a zombie apocalypse is happening but we're yeah. just focusing on these group of people and how they're coping with it and that's kind of what they all kind of work with um, for any one of them I mean any, any film that has zombies there's always a group of people who have to survive usually the situation is like with most horrors uh, a couple of them or nearly all of them are, are killed off and um, sometimes they find new people and sometimes they just get killed off slowly until there's only one yeah <laughs> the dead will walk the earth we are down to the line folks we are down to the line dawn of the dead so what's the things you like most about the remake of Dawn of the Dead when you do about the original Vivian, honey, are you okay? Look up the road, there's a lot more of them. Why are they coming here? Maybe they're coming for us. The sooner or later they're gonna get in here. Our baby's gonna be fine. It's only a matter of time. It's coming. They'll find a way in. Oh god. So you've got the running zombies, it gives you something to legitimately be scared of. They're coming at you. Yes. Get out of the way. And I think the build up of this one had. It, it felt a little bit more natural. You felt as though you were coming from a place of not having a clue what was going on, and all of a sudden waking up the next day, and it's it literally is chaos, but you still don't know what's going on. And then for some reason, your husband and your daughter are trying to kill you it's the girl from next door isn't the it girl from next yeah, door yeah and she's... a boyfriend yeah so she comes home from a, a hard day's graft she's a nurse yes and a hard night's graft that she's come home she has a shower she has a bit of sex with her fella yeah and then all hell breaks loose and it's basically they set the scene up kind of like Shaun of the Dead uh, well that's fact, funny Shaun of the Dead and Dawn of the Dead came out the same year yeah but this the idea of the scene that the bit when she drives home and, and suburbia is kind of normal and she's just driving normal and everything's fine but there's kind of little things that are kind of out of place and the news is kind of like a little bit odd Yeah. because the next time she drives out the whole place is in chaos and she does the same journey in reverse and there's cars everywhere there are people kind of sprung about the floor and there's fires in the distance And but it's, it's done in such a beautiful um, it's like cinema scope kind of a visual yeah. and, and it's it's a visual feast of her escape. It's so remarkable that well, it, it really captured me. It really got me. Well, I had the same thing because it was all pretty normal to that point. Yeah. And then she sort of wakes up and the little girl from next door is in the bedroom with them. That's it, yeah. And um, she's like, well, she's it. And then that's where that little girl attacks her boyfriend. And that's then it. the little girl goes for it. And that to me was scary because it's a little girl. Yeah, coming for you, and you tell you're terrified of this little girl, and then as we see now, yeah, it's uh, just relentless. And then she's Still trying to save it, yeah. a boyfriend, and then a boyfriend dies. She tries to get the phone, and then a boyfriend behind her just stands up. Yeah, and then attacks her. Yeah, and she it's doesn't great. know what the hell she's going as going on, uh, but she's terrified. She wants to escape, but just then, when she went r running into the bathtub, she they they sped that up a little bit because it was she literally just went crashing into yeah. the bathtub, um, but. The only thing is, is that she doesn't seem to be that upset that her boyfriend has... She looks pretty terrified to me. She's in shock. Uh, maybe it's shock that takes yeah, over, because yeah. when she finally gets somewhere that's a bit safe, she, she loses it. She loses it, yeah. yeah. And that's it. That's what. So it's the adrenaline that's breaking up. And she's, she's, she's doing it. She's doing the business. And it's kind of like a little bit of psycho here. A little bit of psycho in the bathroom and uh, the, the, the bit of the shining. shining there. So they're, they're kind of pulling in all these beautiful little pieces that work all well together. And uh, of course, you got to have that and uh, freedom. And all of a sudden, I mean, this is what I mean. This this beautiful scene where she gets into the car. It's it's kind of weird. <laughs> it's like people shooting guns off neighbours and it's like I just love the scene where she just drives off and everything's kind of just crashing around people are falling into her car yeah. and that to me it made me feel like this was here this could be here yeah Dawn of the Dead the original 
this is not where I am. But look at this. The camera is the camera's mounted on the front of the bonnet, and you just got everything happening. There's so much going on. Yeah. This is the incidentally, this is the first film that I saw uh, with my glasses on. Before then, I had never worn um, glasses for seeing long distance before, and uh, I saw saw the hairs on her on her arms breaking up. I'd never seen that in a movie before. Really? It was like, <laughs> so in a way, this is kind of like real a lot more real the most real experience in the film up to date up to that date to that shot yeah so you sort of got like a pan panoramic shot of like um, a town suburban village and everything was just on fire it's um, fantastic so really well made okay so as a remake yeah I, I I kind of feel as though I am more afraid of this I'm more disturbed by this yeah and I relate to the shopping mall more, more because it's Relatable, and I think that's probably what it is. I mean, I'm not usually a stickler for originals. Originals are usually better than remakes, that in my yeah, opinion. Course, yeah, yeah. But for some reason, I, I kind of felt as though I I needed this to come along to kind of get me there. Yeah, it gets me there. Sketch you there. Yeah, it's crazy stuff. So, how about you? So, why why the why the original and not the remake? No, I, I'm with you. I actually prefer the remake. You do now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, you did, but you did before. Kinda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, I watched Dawn of the Dead, and I actually really liked it. Because yeah. you, do, you just couldn't get on with it, could you? I liked it because yeah. it is still set in a mall. The only thing I had with it is because we brought up, when you see things that looked realistic now, the blood never looked quite realistic in it. It was always too like, light red. Didn't look like blood. Yeah, Star Trek purple always, blood. Yeah, and that always took me out of it a little bit. And um, this got released, so I went watch it at the cinema, and I remember just being blown away by it. I think I'm going to stop it so that the sound just cuts out. Okay. Eventually. Eventually. And then <clears> we, can, <throat> we can focus on his remakes, but yeah. Um, it, it, so but, it was in a in a. There was the some sh shopping mall is a kind of a place where you you fantasise about well, that with the remake they start having fun and a bit of a laugh don't they they're having drinks and all that kind of stuff and it's yeah. all all a bit of fun <laughs> it's all a bit of a yeah a bit of a laugh well that's what I mean it's yeah. like gallows humour isn't it it's a, yeah. you're in a, a, an apocalypse a zombie apocalypse but you've got to try and find some sort of fun yeah like when they have the guy across the way um, who's got in a gun shop and he like holds up a sign saying Burt Reynolds and he'll point down and there's a zombie looks like Burt Reynolds and he'll shoot him. That's it, yeah. That's a really yeah. fun little it's playful fun. thing. It's that's so James Gunn. That's, so that's James Gunn did the screenplay. Getting too, on with yeah, getting on with, with, with trying to do do the best you can to survive with, with what's maintaining your sanity. Yeah. Yeah. And the I like the element with the pregnant woman. Yeah, yeah. It's really yeah. freaky that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Where he obviously her husband's very protective and won't let anyone go near her. Yeah. And then she dies and then gives birth. So when they finally get in there, they're like, look, it's a boy in the show. They open it up and it's just this zombie weird boy. Freaky thing. Yeah. yeah. So that means. But that, that, that basically tells them so much about the situation that mm. that humanity is. Is, is done for even well, before they were even born his wife had been bit hadn't she she had been bit so basically yeah. it was like an exodus situation because she turned into a zombie which was tied to the bed yeah and yeah. she's like ah, you know but she's still tied to the bed and still and I think in the end he has to kill her yeah so he shoots her in the head and then you see this and the belly moves a bit and obviously she gives birth freaky it yeah. is a freaky and it's done really well um, yeah, I mean, geez, I don't, I don't think I've actually seen the zombie birth since then. I think they've avoided it. Yeah. Um, because once you've seen it in that, you don't need to do it again. It's yeah. Doesn't usually it doesn't usually stop people like American Wolf in London. <laughs> that's that's how you change from a man to a werewolf. They keep trying to do it. <laughs> no one's ever done it as good as that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, off subject. <laughs> but yeah, I, I actually and I really like the end because the ending they finally get to a port don't they and they get on a boat and they think everything's safe and they yeah. end up getting to that island they think everything's okay now yeah. and it's all home video footage and then you just have this footage of them being attacked yeah which is great again. perfect ending perfect yeah. ending and, uh, and was that set up for the sequel or no they, they never did a they sequel. never did a sequel to that one because I, kind of, I kind of was waiting for the sequel I always was waiting and then the kind of all these other zombie films suddenly came out of the woodwork 
Well, that's that's yeah, zombies. days later and all those kind of things. Yeah, they, they were sort of born out of yeah, that. Exactly. But it just tapped into something. I think the running zombie just tapped into something that we got a lot of for a while. Yeah. But then there's been a few more original takes on it, like the uh, like the Nazis in, in Snow. Uh, that Dead German, Snow. Dead Snow, which is a... That was fun. Yeah. Uh, and a different way of doing it. But then they kind of... There were some that really went off off their heads. I mean, it's like Snakes on a Plane. They did Zombies on a Plane. <laughs> yeah. And then Night of the Living Dead Plane or something. I don't. Plane of the Dead. Plane yeah. of the Dead. Yeah. And it was... The Flight of the Living Dead. That was the one. And it was just like really... They've, they've done they've, they've had to, they have to do this there's, so yeah but. there was loads of, there was one it was based in an asylum and the whole film is sort of like mental health and there's a weird scary scientist by the end of the film it's full on zombies in this asylum and the, the, I think the medication they're using to try and cure this mental health with them was turning them into these mindless zombies okay that's that's yeah it's wild it's pretty dark I mean the asylum films are always pretty dark but then you could say that the zombie films like by, by Romero and other people would have spawned Evil Dead. Stephen King, author of Carrie, said, Evil Dead is the most ferociously original horror film of the year. If you think he's kidding, see for yourself. Evil Dead. They got up on the wrong side of the grave. Evil Dead from New Line Cinema. Starts tomorrow at these theaters. Check newspapers for times. Because the the Deadites and Evil Dead are technically zombies. Yes. And yes. there was a remake of Evil Dead. There is. Yes. I just did a link. You did a link. That's one of your first first links. Okay, I'll give you a point for that. Hated seeing the cabin like this. Oh, is that blood? What is this? Shouldn't have touched anything from that basement. Kunda Strata Montose Kunda. You are all going to die tonight. That one? Is that the remake? Yeah. Okay, oh yeah, 2013. Have you ever seen it? I have not watched this. It's really good. Is it really? It, it's, yeah, quite fearful. But isn't the same guy responsible for... Sam Raimi produced it, who God, directed yeah. the first one, um, with um, Campbell. But he was, um, I forget the director's name now, I think he's a Spanish guy, I think. Fe, is it Fede Alvarez or something like that? Oh. Fede, there it is on the right, Fede Alvarez. Fede Alvarez, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, so the it's pretty much within the canon then. Yeah, yeah. So it's a remake that's been authorized and is, is, and Bruce Campbell is producing it, right? Every, yeah, everything's turned up to eleven. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> but there's a real sense of sort of um, the filter they use on the lens make everything feel very real and prickly and stuff, and it's not scary. But one hell of a ride, and there's um, some great sort of conventional, like no, hardly any CGI in it. If there is any CGI, in good, it. good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. There's this scene where um, this they, they go down to make sure she's all right. She put her in the cell like in the original, yeah. And she comes out of nowhere and sort of grabs her, and she's all her face is all messed up, and she gets um, like a, a bread cutter, switches on and cuts her own tongue in half down the middle like the snake thing and then grabs this girl and then just kisses her and all blood starts pouring out of her mouth and stuff like that it's, all the practical effects are brilliant in it spot on yeah and they don't do it as um, like in the original Evil Dead which you can tell she's getting raped by trees she sort of just gets like strung up by these trees and then the branch just twists around her leg and then go, it goes up her skirt so you get the idea so it's more like a, it's happens. more like an alien infestation of you know, I've, I've, you've seen that before in, in kind of like Invasion of the Body Snatchers where yeah, it yeah. just kind of just creeps in yeah yeah you precisely. don't need to see it yeah, yeah. but yeah. it's really graphic really gory it's nice. not as good as the original never going to be but it's a really good remake yeah well the, the first worth a watch. the first Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2 especially they were both films that wanted to to push it wide open the convention of of, of the horror slasher kind of chiller film 
and it really did that and it was of its time so the evil then remake is just again to just keep people awake for that and yeah. maybe and a lot of people who saw that did go back to the originals because they did get yeah. re-released so and you know it's do we want to do a remake a second one of that you know to carry on from that but i think they're doing um a series now called ash versus the evil dead okay which you know i'm kind of looking forward to and i think tv series are the other remake that we haven't really mentioned because there's there's uh, like like fargo and um and and hannibal yeah. they're doing a lot of series now because series has gotten to the status where the writing is so good the director's so good the money that's invested in tv series is that good that they're able to to do what they wanted for the film, but go that much further. Yeah, but like you say, you got the Man from Uncle much. that's just come out. Yeah, which is a remake of a series. Yeah, the Mission Impossible is a remake of a series, which we talked about last week. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So it's prevalent. It's not just. Ripping but it's off but films, it's going you know? but it's going the other way. I mean, it's like those are remakes from TV series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A yeah. lot of films are going. Yeah, back I know what you're saying. Yeah, I know what you're saying. So because that's where the money is, and that's where the talent is. Um, Okay, so, so yeah, I mean, there's you got films like The Hills Have Eyes, which originally was about um, the the Wes Craven film, wasn't it? Yeah, that was another uh, kind of a creepy film that was about um, uh, that was to do with the uh, nuclear testing in the hills of yeah, Utah, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and sort of like inbreeding subspecies uh, yeah. attacked people are on holiday. The remake wasn't very good. No, I don't think it really popped, and uh, it kind of has a kind of an aura of Texas Chainsaw Massacre in it. It does, and the Hills of Eyes, the re the remake was. I remember it had like one of the um, sub one of the inbred things raped one of the girls, and I just you don't need it. You it don't gets need to see that. yeah, it gets a bit dirty, it gets yeah. a, bit, a bit dirty and a bit unnecessarily so. And uh, because I think what they say, well, what what do you think would really happen? I said, yeah, but that's not what we want to see. What would you like to see happen? Not what would really happen, mm. because that just becomes dark. That's just Ed Gaines, you know. You don't want to see Ed Gaines. You want to see Leatherface. Yeah. Um, mm. In like remakes of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is of course also a remake. Yeah, they also remade that, which I actually like the remake to the Texas yeah. Chainsaw Massacre. And um, yeah, and for the reasons that we talked about, the fact that it's it's returned back to the, its original concept much easier than uh, than it than all the pretty uh, oh i and going back to that i had no idea that to to toby hooper directed the second film oh did you know he directed the second film with dennis hopper right i don't know that crazy and that was a film that that i thought was just such a such a departure and such a and uh, that, that's that shocked me completely had no idea that that was true but yeah, he directed the second one. Mm. So it's kind of like he lost he lost his plot in a way. Yeah. So okay, so the remakes thing, like the thing is also a good remake. Yeah, but it's, is, that's that's more of a um, kind of a, that that's setting up the Norwegian story more so. Than no, the no, not that. The thing is a remake from the thing from another planet. Oh, sorry, yeah. The B movie. We so the remakes that we like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I like both remakes. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I, kind of cool. I weren't as fussed with the second one, second the thing. But, because there's too much CGI for me. But it's the John Carpenter one that's really the pivotal one. Yeah, which we talked about quite a lot. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one, of our, one of our big ones. Yeah, it's, it's really, all right, what about The Fly? It's a fantastic film. It yeah. It was a remake. That was a remake as well, and that's that's um, Cronenberg yeah. doing his Body Shocker films. And uh, yeah, I mean, that was a. Uh, I mean, Gina Davis was in that as well, Jeff Goldblum. It's, they worked really well together. I, I, it's enjoyable, it's believable that yeah. they go through that kind of problem of him turning into a fly and his, his decaying and his losing his arms and things parts body parts just falling off yeah him, it was, it's great dr seth brundle's brilliant invention goes horribly wrong and two beings merge into one Starts Friday, August 15th at theatres everywhere. But it was the right time to do it because it was the time of of full-on prosthetic Rick Baker effects yeah. and everybody was doing the right thing in that era of... of There's movies. two parts of the remake of The Fly that always stayed in my head. The one part when he's arm-wrestling that guy and he cracks his 
that bone he cracks his bone yeah. and it comes out of his skin bone contusions never oh. and then when he's got, sitting down to eat some food when he's starting to change and then he just he's, all that acid comes out of his mouth onto the food yeah, yeah. and I was like ugh lovely <sighs> he's gorgeous and then he starts to have to he has to he dismembers his jaw doesn't he he just dismantles his jaw he pulls it off because he doesn't need it anymore yeah but, and the ending is heartbreak when he just gets the gun and puts it to his head and he's got those big eyes sort of looking at yeah because you Jim know he's Davis. still in there he's yeah still and he's still just kill me oh yeah, yeah. Big, it's, it's a big movie that but yeah it was the right time I think a, a lot of movies are, are, are in the early 80s put a lot of budget into into that the, into those teams I mean they used to work in huge factory conditions massive areas and they would just work there do their whole career work in, in, in one character yeah and it it meant something back then and it was important um, that's why I love the American Werewolf in London, which hasn't necessarily been remade, but they say that American Werewolf in Paris was a remake. But okay, Halloween. Did you like the remake of that? No, not as I much. hated so, the, ha- the remake of Halloween. Well, let's move terrible. on. Inside every one of us, there exists a dark side, but some are consumed by it. Michael, I heard that on Halloween night. The boogeyman tax kids who likes to eat little boys like you. On August 31st, Rob Zombie reinvents a legend. Halloween. Rated R. Again, we've talked about this at great length, but he gave Mike Myers a backstory. He didn't need a backstory. The enigma was enough to yeah, carry him Yeah, the fact that he's manifesta- is manifesta- evil, that's what he is. You don't need to give him a backstory that he had fucking bad, you know, he had a bad upbringing and all that kind of shit. You don't need it. I mean, how many sequels here did we actually enjoy the remake of? I mean, The Haunting? No way. No, no, the Fog? Was. No, definitely not. Okay, the, okay, so The Invasion of the Body Snatchers was one, definitely. The uh, Before Body Snatchers. Yeah. And Before um, The Invasion. Which, so that's, that's probably been the most remade movie, I believe. Wasn't there a TV series called The Invaders as well? The Invaders. Alien beings from a dying planet. Their destination, the Earth. Their purpose, to make it their world. Um, Based on the, a similar idea. The Invaders, yes. Yeah, sim- similar, but that was, uh, yeah. They were, they were aliens from a planet. It was the cheapest sci-fi uh, TV series ever made because the only thing they ever really saw was the UFO at the beginning, mm. which they used in every single introduction. And for the whole episode, it was usually just another human, uh, an alien masquerading as a human somewhere in the story. You had to find out which one was the alien right. of the story this week. And it was, yeah. it was okay, but it was not fantastic. I preferred Land of the Giants when it came to that kind of series right, that came okay. out at that time. But uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, 1978. Every time, hands down. Again, Jeff, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. He knows how to pick them. He does. <laughs> but no, it's a great film. It's a great film. Um, Have you seen the remake to Carrie? Um, I haven't... And I think no. on purpose, I think I, I didn't want to. I mean, it's uh, like again, it's okay, but it's not. Yeah. It's not great. I tend to avoid watching, and, and that, that, this is probably what you're probably to say why we're we doing a podcast on this because there are some good remakes out there, but a lot of them I've avoided so far. I mean, I saw the remake of The Hitcher without Rutger Hauer. I kind of missed not having Rutger Hauer in there, but the remake was a lot more graphic and a lot more disturbing than the original Hitcher, even though. The original Hitcher had more gravity, more, there was more, more menace. Weight to it. In it, yeah, suppose. more menace, but not as gruesome and not as because uh, you you cut away when things got bad when they pulled the kid over apart with the two trucks. Yeah, um, but on the remake, you see it, you see every gruesome detail, which yeah made it harder to watch because you knew it was going to happen and the idea of your body being split apart. Doesn't cheer me up. No, and it makes you feel uncomfortable. Did you? Um, so the Omen. Did you see that remake? I have. I owned it for a while. Did you like it though? No. Damien, look at me, Damien. It's all for you. Why did you own it? Um, I got, someone bought it me. 
because yeah. obviously I love horror films. And that's the funny thing. Isn't <clears> it? I want to watch it otherwise, so I thought I'd put it on watch it. And it's just one of those where you just don't understand why they've remade it. Yeah. Just go back and watch the 70s one. Yes. It's better, better acted. It's <laughs> it's great. Perfect. And it's a, yeah. Uh, perfectly legitimate and also Mia Farrow was in the remake yeah and there's she was the woman who kind of brought Damien up Leif Leif Striver I like I like him but he's kind of like being forgotten about he's I think he's doing TV now more than anything um Liev and uh yeah it's a nothing nothing added to it no nothing absolutely nothing added to it just just taken away yeah absolutely and again you know if it introduced people to the original, then well done. Yeah, that because would be the original is a fucking brilliant film. They rarely do. I mean, they rarely hail the original, and I think you, you you see it in the TV interviews when there is a remake, like in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre one. Um, they've been told to talk about the original. Yeah, they've just like you said, we want to be faithful to the fans and to the original film, which was iconic. I'm like, you haven't seen it, have you? you know they kind of say yeah. using buzzwords and it's like buzz 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 and it's like well yeah you're kind of doing that because you want the fans of the original to come along and join you for the ride but rarely do they want to I mean it's I mean some of them did and there was it was kind of quiet after a while after the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake but but The Omen nobody really wanted to talk about it nobody wanted to do any more which is lucky because it didn't make the money and it didn't go ahead and make any more so yeah yeah. Yeah. But we need to find some more good ones. Where are all the good ones, man? Good remakes. The Wicker Man. Was that a good remake? Straw Dogs. Was that a good remake? Okay, so let's go on to the Japanese circuit. Japanese. Okay, um, so in the 90s, we got obsessed with J-horror, is what we called it, with all, like, Ring and The Grudge and Ring 2 and Ring 3. And, they, they were actually uh, the late, late 90s, only 2000s. Dark Water. Yeah, yeah, Dark Water. They all came out and they all kind of had, dripped with the same black ink. Yeah, I loved all that. When I watched yeah, the Ring for the first out. time, Ooh. oh my God. Yes. Didn't know anything about it. I just knew... I, 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 I'd heard about it I'd never seen it and then that ending when she came out the TV because it's shot so well in the original one oh, it yeah. feels like it's coming out of your TV and once the once that part was over with I realised I was like stood up on the couch just like that <laughs> and then I just sort of relaxed and sunk back in so I thought right that really got to me really does and, and even I mean both the remake and the original but were both spot on with that but yeah, they, they are obviously the reason why the Americans wanted to remake it and not use the Japanese film is because nobody wanted to sit there and watch subtitles, and they desperately wanted to make a fast buck off it. But yeah, it was still good. Have you heard about this videotape that kills you when you watch it? You start to play it, and it's like somebody's nightmare. And as soon as it's over, your phone rings. And what they say is, you will die in seven days. I've watched it. It was a week ago. Seven days. <laughs> Still good. Because you Naomi Watts, who's... She's good. My, my, my only issue with it, it, with it is... There were some incredible scenes that they didn't put in, yeah. like um, when she goes to find the video for the first for the first time. Mm, mm. Um, it has to be a hut in the middle of hell, this really creepy place where it isn't in the Japanese one. It's a hut in this nice little holiday place. And yeah. one of my favourite bits is she's just about to put it on. She looks into the, uh, the 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 TV that hasn't been switched on yet, and behind her you could just see Sadako or whatever his name with her just pointing at her. I, at the back and she looks round and there's nothing there so they, took, they didn't, they, they didn't, they didn't put that, that in the American one yeah yeah. and my only other issue with the American when she does come through the TV she sort of like they put loads of animation on her like it's static from a TV yeah and at one point she goes from just being there and being dead closer straight away like a jump 
just a cheap jump scare that the fact that someone's come out of the TV and is creeping towards them isn't enough you know? yeah that is enough and they didn't realise that they didn't get the idea of of their suspense in the actual approach yeah but taking that out of it I yeah. think the American ring was scarier than the Japanese ring apart from just a, a, a few a few elements. bits that they just decided not to do or to add I and do think maybe that's be, that's probably because of the relatability of of what you're looking at it's more relatable in that yeah. respect and yeah I mean the, the thing about the horses on the on the thing and they all have to get pushed off on yeah because that wasn't in the original the horses was yeah it? I mean I, I, it was it was unusual scene but I kind of felt I felt sad for the horses mm. and kind of like well, what am I doing what is, what's this what is this yeah um, so there was a kind of few things that kind of jumped out that weren't right quite there and I didn't understand why but then they were still you still remember them and yeah, I don't know yeah. why why that that stays with me and then we had the, a remake of Ring 2 yes and Ring Zero yeah which is still all workable films you know still quite scary yeah and he actually got Naomi Watts to come back to do the second one yeah that was, that's good yeah and then uh, the, have you ever seen Shutter at all yes Shutter was a really good re- remake I thought mm, yeah because um, yeah. that was the idea the idea behind it was freaky mm the camera and the photographs and taking pictures and things just appearing and I love that I love that kind of thing because photography is still an enigma and people still haven't figured out you know is is photography seeing something beyond our own scope of vision the yeah. camera is not a human eye the pictures you are about to see are real they have not been retouched or manipulated It is called spirit photography, an event in which images of the dead are caught on film. Yeah. I love that idea, and I love that, and that was uh, interesting. What did you think of the remake of The Grudge? That's the Sarah Michelle Gellar one, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, creepy as hell. The whole time I was in that house, I thought something was wrong. It was still creepy as hell, but yeah, I I, lo- I prefer the parody in in the scary movie. I think that's the thing about the scary movie parodies is that they parodied the whole film of the Grudge, so I kind of remember that more yeah. than I remember the Grudge. Because I, uh, uh, it's the same. Uh, Someone did that to me over the phone. I would freak out, and I'm sure there's somebody who freaked out just then. Yeah, but yeah, what were you saying? Long enough after I watched The Ring. Um, it was in the cinema. My mate was going watching it. I left a message on his phone just saying, seven days. I just put the phone down. <laughs> <laughs> I was got a text back saying, cunt. <laughs> but, um, you are evil. Yeah, yes, I am. But I, I really like the Japanese grudge. It's like a collection of stories where they all sort of come together at the very end. And every story is fucking freaky, man. Really scary. And like the part where um, she gets in the lift and she's going up the lift and you see that boy on every level staring at her and she's got a back to it and every level the, the lift goes past the elevator goes past you see the boy that kind of That's really, and then she starts sorry yeah. and then she starts to get like really freaked so she gets into her apartment shuts the door she, I think she I have the phone goes or she rings somebody and you hear the it's, it's freaky so she gets into bed and she's like that you know because that's the thing you do you're scared you get into bed and hide under the covers no one had ever really taken that away from you very it had it, been in certain things but I've never seen that taken away from me the fact no. that you put your head under the covers and now you're safe and then she's under the covers and you just see like this thing start to rise under the covers and then she sort of looks down and that the girl's in bed with her and just goes for it and then she's gone oh freaky and Great. that was that was the original remake that's original I think I'm not sure if they did that in the remake they should have done if they had they had a nice thing in the remake where she's having that shower. Do you remember she's having a shower, and she puts her hands to the back of her head, and then two hands like come out of her hair. Oh God, yeah, yeah. And then she's yeah. like, then she turns around. There's nothing, nothing there. That is freaky. Yeah. Because the, the, the thing is about a shower, it's one of those places where you kind of switch off sensory wise, and you kind of you 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 got sh- you don't want to get shampoo in your hair in your eyes, so you kind of shut off for a second. Yeah. So yeah, do you probably can imagine it would just put you off having sh- showers for a little bit. The mm-hmm. ratnophobia did that for me. Yeah. Um, because you know showers and spiders don't 
mix. That's true. Uh, Dark Water. Dark Water I haven't seen. Have you seen the original? No. You would absolutely love the original. What? When was the original? Um, either early 2000s, I'd say, or maybe late 90s. Okay. Um, a woman, um, she's di- divorced from a fella, and the fella's trying to get custody of the kid, and she's got no money. And she keeps being late picking the kid up. There's all these sad scenes of the kid in just in torrential rain outside just stood there while she's late she's like um, but anyway they end up getting Bad, this, yeah, yeah. But, but she's not she's this trying to not, be she's trying to do you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. and um, she moves into this apartment block looks like there's hardly anyone living there and it starts off very subtle where um, there's a little dark patch of war like damp in the ceiling starts to form and it starts to get bigger but weird things start to happen she starts to see things out the corner of her eye and it just escalates and it's I, I'd like really like to watch it I think you'd want to talk about it I thought, yeah, because, because yeah. Uh, the ending is heartbreaking okay and it's a bit of a, there's one part of it is a homage to The Shining as well at the very end but it's a the original is a really well made and very scary film the remake with Jennifer Connelly is not as scary it's more of a psychological thing okay. about being alone with your kid and the element of the ghost thing is there, but it just wasn't scary yeah. at all to me. I think we picked the perfect place to live. Look, Mommy, look how high I can jump. What's that? From the author of The Ring. There's a leak in my bedroom ceiling. I can hear someone running water upstairs. There hasn't been anyone up there for years. There are forces from beyond our world. Who are you talking to? Nobody. They seek entry into ours. Hello? Hello? I will definitely look that up and we'll definitely watch that because there's another film that's on in, in this list here that I would like to watch and that's The Last House on the Left because I have not seen the original. It, yeah, it's like a rape thing, rape Is revenge it? thing, I think. The despicable revenge. Yeah, but it, it, it's but this is kind of one. It's sort of because what's you know, unfriended is kind of ambiguous what they've done until the end, isn't it? Yeah, you know, and that she's involved, but it, there's nothing ambiguous about this. Uh, three guys rape a girl, and that's the and original. They, yeah, and they think they've left her for dead, and she she comes back. Is it right? There's one where she comes back and kills him. That's I spit in your grave, isn't it? This one, I'm sorry, I think. Something happens to one of them. They end up going to the last house on the left, right? They go to the house and they try and hold it up. It ends up being the parents of the girl that they've killed, God. raped and killed, and they torture them. Got it. I think it. I think that's what it is. Okay, I spit on your grave. Yeah, would be. It sounds more. Yeah. So I think we've got some got some viewing to uh, to yeah. do for next time. But um, okay, so there's another remake here that I can see that 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 you hated. Fright Night. Ugh. The only part of the remake of Fright Night I liked was David Tennant in it. <laughs> he was quite funny. But... There's such weird stuff in that film, and it's like really blah. It's like it's, it's, it felt stupid. I felt yeah. I felt my brain was just stupid. Um, same with Psycho, the remake when the, the Gus Van Sant <sighs> remake. Uh, What's the of... point in that? Oh, my boy's best friend is his mother. <laughs> She just, uh, she just goes a little mad sometimes. Mother! Oh, God! Mother! There's no yeah. remake that is safe, and I don't think we can safely say that, that, that there haven't been a few remakes recently where we thought, oh, my God, why? Why bother remaking something like, I mean, like, like we said, the Psycho, the original was Hitchcock. You don't remake a Hitchcock. No. But, it, <laughs> but then you've got like uh, the remake of Nightmare on Elm Street. The Nightmare on Elm Street. What was yeah. the point in that? They less just, counted people made a less good film. Yeah, because what happened? Less with, good film. Really. Less good film. Uh, Check grammar out, Andy. It's all right. I can re-edit your words to make them sound good. Phenomenal. Less film. Film. L- less. Less good. Less, made the film worse than what it should be. Yeah. But Nightmare on Elm Street. It lost its allure 
purely because Freddy Krueger is a personality mm. who stalks people. Already, I lost interest because there's nothing that he that they can do in a movie that is going to make me feel scared of him because he's always just going to be a personality yeah. in a movie rather than an alien or a Friday the Thirteenth or a hidden hidden darkness in either corner. Too much of Freddy out there. So to make to remake a movie and try and make him more of an enigma, it's too late. He's already out there. We know every inch of that guy. So why make a Friday the Thirteenth remake? Friday the 13th is the whole... Um, because Friday yeah. the 13th, we had the first one, which was his mum. And yes. then the second one, he comes back to avenge his mum's death. That's it. And then he finds his hockey mask in the third one. And then three, four, five, six, seven... Then he Freddy goes into... F- Freddy... Every one's a remake of the last. Yeah. And Freddy versus Jason and there's... Uh... Yeah, yeah. There's that. Freddy goes to fucking space. Yeah. Not Freddy. Jason goes Jason to space. Jason goes to space. Yeah. That basically, it makes you feel like that they knew that the original had a, a, an audience pulling, and they, that some people, some people out there, are kind of trying to, to, to see if the original is still accessible. Mm. I'm still in shock that Toby Toby Hooper did the sequel, <laughs> the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mean, I'm because uh, I said people don't get what the original is and what, what it is and, and, and if people came to us first and said read the script we'd, I, I, I'd say they say that a lot of the remakes that have been made we'd say no this is not a remake Yeah, this is garbage rethink it look watch the go home watch the original really watch it figure out what it is that makes it so good and then don't do it because when they try to do it they just end up just hacking it yeah, making a hack job of, of things that they thought were a moment so Tom Hooper didn't understand his own film no and that's scary because he, he's tied to the genre as well he's so tied to the, the genre of horror that I think he just felt as though he could do no wrong and that people mis people mis uh, misunderstood the idea that, that the original was supposed to be a black uh, comedy mm. No, I don't think it's supposed to be a black comedy. I think that he probably just had too much fun making it. Yeah. Different when you're a when you're a filmmaker. I mean, to me, is is CACO three our short film? If somebody remade that, what what would you think as acceptable? What would it? What would the direction be if they made it into a feature? That's a big question. What would the direction? What would I want the direction? What would you to like be? the direction be, and what would reality be? Well, I'd like it to be the same pace as it is, as ambiguous as it is. But I think the reality would be it'd be turned up to eleven. Eleven. You, um, you would want David Lynch to take hold of it. Basil Exposition would be jumping around all the time and explaining what's going on, who that voice is. Yeah, where the parcel came from. Yeah, where why all the stamp marks are on the parcel. To be yeah, when he comes to pick up the parcel and starts wa- walking. And then they'll be like, there it is, there's the parcel. And then there'll be a, a back shot of his mum, his mum mental, putting all this stuff in a box and wrapping it all up and going, ah. This is his favourite teddy bear, and talking to the nurse who's in, in, in the room. Yeah, he's... he'll love this, this will bring, this will bring up good memories for him. And these are some photographs, there are surprise, surprise ones in here. Yeah. Exactly. But that's kind of what remakes do, isn't chalk it? Chalk face, chalk face, chalk face. Yeah, and that's what would chalk, happen. Chalk. It would be the enigma would be blown open like a like a like an open can of worms and then yeah right something that goes open yeah and something that goes open have and you seen it. Let Me In I do not I, nobody's let you know, I rarely get to see horrors because it, unfortunately in I mean you're, fortunately in your house horrors are easy to get onto the screen <laughs> yeah in this house they're very hard unless I am absolutely on my own in, in the yeah. house at night late and I, the thing is the scary thing is is that I can't watch horror films late at night <laughs> because I get scared and I'm on my well, own if you click on that I said because I'm not sure if the yeah. original was called Let Me In I think it was called something different if I click on that we should get Let the Right One In Let the Right it. One In so yeah Let the, the Right film. One In is a Swedish film and it's amazing okay it's a really really good film um it's like this girl this young girl is essentially a vampire and she gets this sort of relationship going with this young boy uh, all the time she has this uh, this boy is sort of like a recluse lives in the apartment next to her 
um, tries to talk to her at first, but she's like, you know, we can never be friends. And he's like, well, I never want to be your friend anyway. <laughs> kind of, you know how kids are. And um, as it transpires that um, this young girl has this older fella with her who gets her prey, you know, gets her blood so she can survive. And it's, it's a bit sensitive about that, but they get this relationship going between the young boy and this vampire who could be 50, 60, 70 years old but still stuck in like a young girl form and they just build this unlikely relationship between each other and they end up protecting each other and it's, oh. it's really sweet, really nice different, yeah different there's a scene at the very end uh, which you probably don't want me to tell you because it'll spoil it and you're yawning so I'm boring you anyway so, oh um, god no um, this is radio don't tell them I'm yawning <laughs> So they're, they're, it was, he's getting bullied basically by you know all these. And she's standing up for him. And... Well, she's gone at this point. Oh, she's gone. Yeah, oh, I, for reasons that you, you have to watch the film to see. But <sighs> she helps him at the end, and it's amazing the way it's shot. I won't tell why, but she she helps him, and it's brilliant. The right. remake somehow they messed the ending up. It's nowhere near as great as it is in the Swedish film. The face of an angel. You guys just moved in, huh? Yeah. The mind of a child. <laughs> the power. You okay? Of a predator. Are you a vampire? I need blood to live. From the director of Cloverfield. You kill people. I do because I have to. How do you protect someone? Cloverfield. When they destroy <laughs> everything they touch. <laughs> Let me in. Rated R. Starts October 1st. And, and how is that? Is is there a fear of rep repeating it so that they try and do it? But it's I, weird, I, I guess it, Matt works. Reeves, I think, is a talented director. He directed Cloverfield. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 He did. Directed uh, Cloverfield. Yeah. Yeah, but then there are there are there are some directors who won't do remakes. Mm. Um. You know. You. But Martin Scorsese did a remake of Cape Fear. Um. That was amazing. Yeah, that was. It's amazing. not a horror film, and I know it's not a but, but Counselor. it's still it's horror enough to yeah. say that that uh, not many people do that. Not many people, big directors, touch remakes, and remakes are usually for for directors who are kind of like uh, starting to get, starting in the business. They're usually young. And sometimes it can be with actors as well. We'll do a remake. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then to. To start yeah, them off, yeah, to it's get bigger things. So maybe there is a place for remakes to a keep keep the, uh, the 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 idea alive of what the stories are. Sometimes you can get remakes as a part of a bundle with the original film. Yeah, that's they did, always interesting. They did that with with uh, Ocean's Eleven, and they put the original Sammy Davis Jr. and all that. Because the original Ocean's Eleven wasn't very good. It was more like a musical yeah. ensemble of friends who were just hanging out. But then the remake of it is really good. It is really good, yeah. yeah. And Brad Pitt eats food all the time. Yeah, and that's Great. kind of his character. I love that. Point. That's what I think about him. I mean, mm -hmm. But he does it in every film. Does it? Yeah. But, 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 yeah. but uh, yeah, and, and that was also a, a well-established director, Doug Soderbergh. Mm. Um, so you know that when they are making a remake and they are competent directors that to a certain extent they they know what the original was yeah and they're not just trying to play it up to be anything else but that any, so, do you want to go back to that list any you want to have a quick talk about before we um... well we, we didn't really talk about Psycho because Gus Van Sant did uh, a shot by shot remake of Psycho yeah and uh, everybody hated it and I, I did watch it and I, I, I did, went to the cinema watching it yeah and it was you kind of just kind of feel like it's somebody who's really trying to just remake a film. I mean, how easy is it to just remake it shot by shot? I mean, I don't think it could be that easy. But the fact that it's in colour and it's got Vince Vaughn as a kind of like getting him into there with Anne Hesh, Anne Hesh there. Yeah. You, everything kind of feels false. But at the same time, you kind of want it to be good because it's a remake of Psycho and it could be. Good. And Gus Van Sant's a talented filmmaker. Yeah. So you kind of you kind of feel more disappointed because you don't know what to do with it. Yeah. You don't know where to put it in your in your list. You I feel like I didn't enjoy it. No. 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 I didn't enjoy bit flat. It. it was just a flat story because you just knew that you were watching a remake. Yeah. And shot by shot. But one of the best all-time Ear the Threes. 
is um, when they're on the staircase and she just comes out with the knife. Yeah, yeah. I still to this day. Look, yeah. yeah, that's Exorcist Three. I mean, that's that whole coming yeah. out of the knife. Yeah, the head it? and jaws. You know. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that you know that they've got it right if they've hit that mark. Yeah. And um, and not many, but not every director knows how to do that for some reason, or maybe not just so much the director but the editor. Mm. The editor will be in charge of that pace. But uh, yeah, I, I still think that uh, you know when it comes to horror films, there's going to be a renaissance period where remakes are going to happen all over again. It's, it seems to be now that the eighties. I've talked about this quite a bit. Where like Carpenter, and were paying homage to like Hitchcock, and now people now are paying homage to Carpenter, well, like we did. Yeah. So in like. So what happens is you get remakes, then actors paying a homage to the, then directors paying homage to the directors they were in love with. Then you get all those kind of films, then remakes. And our son, and then, our son's going to worship Jessica Biel in Texas Chainsaw Massacre because yeah, that's well, his you get, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Because you get like a load of original films and yeah. then they start remaking older films and then new directors start homaging the, like what's happening now, like yeah, you know, they're having yeah. Carpenter. And then there'll be a few original films like we're having with Unfriended and It Follows. They and then be, we'll have a load more remakes remade. again. Those will, those will be remade. Yeah, and there'll be remakes again. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they'll go back from that. So, you know, it's like a cycle. Of, it is a cycle. A 25-year cycle. cycle. Yeah, you're right. The 25-year horror renaissance. Yeah, and we, we shouldn't be too worried. I mean, and, I mean, the thing is, the originals are still out there. Still getting the starry eyes. Still getting the story. I eyes. loved it. Follows, even though it was obviously yeah. riffing on Carpenter. I still think it's a, a really still. good film. And you know, I I think we're still okay. The, the movie industry hasn't completely lost it in remakes. We're not smothered in remakes, but reboots, however, are kind of a little bit annoying. I think the uh, Spider-Man re oh, reboots, and yeah. uh, I think when it comes to superhero reboots, I think they just need to calm down. I mean, they they're already trying to bring bring Green Lantern out again. Um, yeah, it's, to try and get it they just want to get it right I to make enough money to say that there's a franchise we can spin off this people need to take money out of the hands of Fox yeah. when they've got a superhero franchise because you know they, they fucked up Daredevil and then they went and then so they sold it to back to Marvel Marvel made a brilliant series called Daredevil yep. it's, it's very good Netflix really good I really you know would recommend anyone to watch it and then they have the Fantastic Four, which has made two media well, one pretty bad and second not too bad. Fantastic There's a Roger Corman one in the eighties as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they recently just remade that, and by all accounts, the director tried to make this like body horror shock film, and he didn't get to have that cut. Well, he yeah, he's not been allowed to have the film that he wanted. So the the studio, like they did with Daredevil and like they've done with X Men Wolverine, mm -hmm. the the studio has edited it. The demanded loads of reshoots, which you're not sure whether the directors have overseen or anything. So now you've got this mess fragmenting of a film mess of a film that, that that's that has Katie Mara walking into a room with one coloured hair and walking out with a different coloured hair and yeah. Much has been talked about us. We don't have to put stuff into it. I know we're talking about yeah. remakes and stuff, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're, we've got some upcoming remakes that, of course, everybody's talking about Ghostbusters um, being all female cast. I don't care. It's you know, it, just let it let it happen, let it be, and it's, it, it could be good. Who That's knows? what gets on my nerves. It doesn't take away the original Ghostbusters. It's still there. If you want to go watch it, go watch it. It's there. Stop moaning that there's going to be female Ghostbusters, and by and by all accounts, it's being done as if that never existed. That's it's a completely enough. different universe. And that's okay. And Bill Murray's apparently going to be in it. He's got a little cameo in it. And Love that's it. Absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, the Mad Max, every single film was different, and they still had the same actors appearing in the in in uh, in the sequels that were not the same character. So the, the, the you know there's a there's a character in Road Warrior that's that's not in three, but it's the same actor playing yeah. a different character, slightly similar but just different. And they've never met each other before, and they don't look like they look, look look at each other and say, "Oh, I know you. I think I've seen you before." No, it's just completely different character. It doesn't matter. Life, you know, life has to move on sometimes, and we need to get get over ourselves. Mm. And I'm really talking to me as much as possible because I am still I still want to like the 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 reboot of Star Trek more than what it is. Um, well, I'd, I'd love. I'm getting I'm getting there, and I think if if Simon Pegg does it right this time, 
be the third one for me. I I, I want to see three being the uh, the one that um, yeah I get that, you over. that gets me over. Like I love the first Star Trek, I do the remake, and then I know everyone. It's like the worst kept secret everywhere that it's going to be Khan, and then it doesn't make sense because it doesn't look like Khan, blah blah blah. But what I just took from that film, it was just a roller coaster ride. It was just pure. I've said it before. It's no substance. It's all surface. And yep. but fucking what surface? Yeah. It looked and watched amazing, you know. And yeah. I just remember because I know Spock isn't supposed to get angry. I didn't care because well, I was maybe... like, "Go kick his ass!" Wow. Well, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, musicals—they're always going to remake because no, because musicals are musicals, and that's that's fine. Yeah. Whatever. I don't. I don't like musicals. <laughs> but um, as long as John Travolta doesn't appear in drag anymore, I don't. You know, but then I don't have to watch it. That's the thing; we don't have to watch it. That's yeah. That's so everybody, it. take that with you. If, if if they're remaking a film that you love and they and they don't do it justice, then you don't have to watch it again. Just let it let it happen. Yeah, life's good. And we've just learned a lesson. So instead of moaning about the remake of Friday Thirteenth or Let Me In or whatever, just don't watch it. Yeah, but I will watch it. But it's okay. But, about it. but it's okay to review. Because we, you know, this is what we do. We want to critique. We want to get our feelings out there. And if 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 we tell everybody that they've succeeded when they failed, then they'd end up making more thinking that everybody likes what they've done. So you've got yeah. to be honest and, about yeah. what you so like. We'll try harder. Too. But maybe try harder. Okay. There's yeah. a moral, folks, for this week. Just don't get it under your skin. Just don't get it under the skin. Let it, let it let it go. Or don't let the wrong one in either. Yeah. Or, or don't take a grudge against the crazies on Friday the 13th because the hills have eyes and just flies around. <laughs> that, uh, now, that's horror. now that's a remake, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, I know what you did last summer when my bloody Valentine had a meta-psycho in the dawn of the dead letting me in with, with the grudge and helpers. I don't care <laughs> what I'm saying now. But yeah, it, it, it's basically sp- spoof territory. And don't let's not go on to spoof territory because there's a lot of shitty spoofs. Yeah, you know? like, you know, scary, These days, scary movie being a parody of, um, you know... But they don't, they don't parody, they just, they just remake stupidly. That's a re- a lot of the spoofs, the scary, the scary movie films are are um, they're not even spoofs. Yeah, what was the films called? It's, uh, Scream. Yeah, Scream. So they tried to parody Scream, but Scream was already a parody of the slasher thing. Exactly. Never, anyway, let's leave it there, folks. Come on, Starbuck, get off my knee. Okay. That's a cat, by the way, not 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 um, Cara Therese from Battlestar Galactica, but but Katie Sackoff, if you are available. If she was here, there wouldn't be much <laughs> podcasting going on. Just like, <laughs> Katie Sackoff's here. He's like with Tom Cruise. Oh my God, Tom Cruise is here. Oh, I stood on him. <laughs> I killed Tom Cruise. Thank you very much for listening, guys. Catch you later. Beaver. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>